Welcome to the Publish Plot. I'm Nate. And I'm Mike. And today we are here to talk about Once Saved, Always Saved Theology. Now, Once Saved, Always Saved is a doctrine that is present in some strains of Protestantism. Mm -hmm. Or, if one wants to call it, Evangelicalism. Yes. Since, as a point out, you know, many of these people have... I've only ever known these churches. They're not actually protesting against anything. No, no, no. It, it is it is primarily more of an evangelical kind yeah. of a thing. Now, now, of course, you know, the basic assumption is, uh, if at any point you have given yourself to Jesus, mm -hmm. you have been saved. Yep. Sometimes this involves, as I understand it, because this is outside of my experience. Um, you can you you pray the sinner's prayer. Yeah. Which again. Not really biblical. Or, 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 or you go to an, you, 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 you take part in an altar call. You altar know, call. Yeah. But, but in all of these scenarios, you make you make once a decision for Jesus. Mm -hmm. As is often said, you, you let him into your heart. And after that, you're good. And, and despite, and, 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 and while it's a completely other, a completely ep other episode all in itself, despite the fact that most of these churches will talk very strongly about, you know, works-based mm -hmm. religions uh, you you generally you commit an act you, there's some work that you do at which point that gets you to being saved but what many people really don't think about if you were to take this notion of once saved always saved out to its farthest reaches to its logical conclusion to its logical conclusion you really just stretch it all the way out to the end yeah what most people probably wouldn't realize without doing that is that once saved, always saved is witchcraft. <laughs> once saved, always saved is witchcraft? I, all right, bear with me here. I, I know it, it sounds a little crazy. I'm not disagreeing with you, but that's a bold claim. It's uh, I know. It sounds like I've been reading all sorts of weird pamphlets on tell me, things. Tell me more. All right, so... What strange corner of the internet have you found? So Well, so as we've already discussed, Once Saved, Always Saved is a, is, is a, brand, is a branch of a theology that yeah. suggests that um, you do this thing which gives your life over to God... And from that point on, you are safe. It's 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 a works based variant on Calvinistic unconditional salvation. Exactly. Once you've been Sorry, saved, unconditional election. Most of these people, as part, as once saved, always saved would suggest. Mm -hmm. It generally suggests that once you've been saved, mm -hmm. you can't be unsaved. unsaved. Yeah. Once once you've been saved, there's nothing you can do to lose your salvation. Now. You think about um, in uh, Romans chapter 8, where Paul lists a whole list of things that won't separate us from the love of God. Exactly. None of these things can come in between me and God. And yeah. once I've joined myself to God, yeah. we're good there. Yeah. Now, for a moment, if someone were to ask you for the quickest, simplest description of what witchcraft is... What answer would you give them? I would say, not being a theologian, that witchcraft is um, placing under your control some supernatural or magical power. Right. So making it then obey you. Exactly. In general, Yay, I get uh, old stuff. In general, if you were to look at most practices of witchcraft at least the ones i've seen yeah. I, I'm, I haven't seen everything yeah, yeah, I, I don't mean i don't mean to suggest i'm yeah. some sort of an expert in I, this. I say the magic words and then i bind the demon or or the, whatever else whatever, it is to obey my will exactly yeah i do i i do some action yeah or i use some magical ingredients and i use some words and my doing this enables me to bend a supernatural power to, my, to will. my will. Yeah. Or to bend other human beings to my will. Through that supernatural power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, listen. So, just one more time for the record. I do a thing. And through that thing, I create a contract with a supernatural power to enable me to use that power according to my will. So... I, I, for example, I say the sinner's prayer, 
Okay. Or I answer the altar call. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I have bound God to save me no matter what else I do. Exactly. Now, there would be some that would argue that if by some chance you went really off the rails, you know, you went and you did all these things, and then you went and became a serial murderer and you killed like hundreds of people, um, that in all likelihood you didn't actually mean what you were doing when you did it, and therefore it didn't really take. Or, to use, uh, to use a less murdery example... Um, I say the sinner's prayer once, mm -hmm. and then I go on and I become a professional atheist evangelist, going around the world trying to convince people not to believe in God. Exactly. But at the same time... Well, there's more murdery since I'm murdering their souls. But at the same time, you've got this theology in your head that says, you did this thing, mm -hmm. you made a deal with God, mm -hmm. and even though you aren't holding up your end... He's still got to hold up his. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Whereas, whereas as Catholics, we believe that we are saved by God's grace. It is, a, it is his free gift, which we do nothing to earn or merit. And at any point in time, should we so choose, mm -hmm. we can refuse through either our words or our deeds. Mm-hmm. That gift. Anytime I deliberately choose to sin, especially a grave mortal sin, I am freely rejecting the grace that God has already given me to avoid that sin. Exactly. So when you go and become some atheist evangelist who is then leading other souls to their damnation, you are, through your actions, showing that you are no friend of God's. Yeah, I'm actively rejecting the grace he would give me to spread the gospel. Exactly. In fact, you are taking what grace he has given you, mm -hmm. and you are perverting the gift so that it achieves the opposite goal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so... The thing I've always found strange, I've, I've never considered this before. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea that if you walk what sometimes is called the Romans Road, mm -hmm. which shows you how to, you know, by cherry picking the book of Romans, yep. you know, you can be once saved, always saved. I've never thought about it. You're absolutely right. I am reducing God to a simple eldritch power mm -hmm. that I then control through a magical incantation. This is fundamentally the error at the heart of the television show supernatural where you don't have to have an element of faith no all you have to have are the externals it, the right words or the right object and you could wield any power exactly they don't have to be good god fearing christians in fact for a, for for the almost the entirety of the show they don't for a large part of the show they don't even believe that there is necessarily a God. Yeah, and, and once they find out that there is, he's not really a God worth believing in. He's not a God worth believing in. But yet they can still go, and simply because they use the right words, yeah. they can exercise demons, mm -hmm. uh, they they can go and, and, and kill off you know ghosts and all these other things, because it's, it's not really about the faith. It's about magic. Yeah, and once saved, always saved is, again, a magical incantation that then binds God to me. Exactly. Makes me his master. And, and, and presumably, if you were if you were capable of, ma be, of, making, of making him, of binding him to your will, yeah. you would be a good person about it. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, so what if once in a while, you know, you go and you cheat on your spouse or... Well, you know, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. God still God knows that you're not perfect and you've and you've already given your life over to him so he's going to forgive this one. Well, and, and here's the thing. God absolutely can forgive those sins. And under the, under the correct circumstances, yeah, we will. will. But that's if I have perfect contrition for them, if I'm actually sorry. Yeah. But the temptation is if I'm saved no matter what I do, what would be the point of contrition? And, and, and as as many of us have seen with regards to people uh, who maybe stumble, um, one stumble is 
generally not that hard, but at the same time, it's fairly easy to recover from. However, mm -hmm. there's this temptation where once you've fallen, where once you've fallen off the wagon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh, you, you're gonna get back on the wagon eventually, anyway. So staying off the wagon a little bit longer isn't gonna hurt, really, right? This is one of the great dangers, and why we should all. Once we become aware of a sin, fly to the confessional as soon as possible. Exactly. Because we place ourselves, I know this from my life, you place yourself <laughs> in danger of presumption of, listen, I've already I've already gone this far. I might as well just keep going and then eventually I'll get to confession. Exactly. Except the more you do it, the more you're probably going to put off going to confession. And so little by little, that desire in your heart to truly repent is going to get pushed further and further into a corner until eventually it's buried so deep that you can't even hear its little voice anymore. Exactly. And that's the danger of once saved, always saved. I don't need to go to confession. confession. Or, you know, in the, in the Protestant world, I don't even need to fall on my knees and ask God for I, his forgiveness. I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, well, and then there's a the question of, uh, even if you do, are you necessarily being properly contrite? I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember a time when I had a certain set of uh, yeah. sins yeah. that were very easy for me to fall into. Yeah. And even when I was saying to God that I'm sorry for having done it, it's, I wasn't saying, I'm sorry for having done it, and I hope to never do it again, but I'm sorry for having done it again this time, and I'll be sorry again the next time I, the do, next it. Time I do it. No, it the, so that even something as good as an act of contrition can again become a magical incantation. Uh, I said the words, I for God I, has to forgive exactly. me. Exactly. The disposition of my heart, inconsequential. I confess I my the, sins to God. I said the magic words. Yeah. Now, it, just a, a brief, a, a brief bit of scripture from again st mm -hmm. paul yep in first corinthians chapter 15 now i recall to your minds brethren the gospel that i preached to you which you also received wherein you also stand through which also you are being saved okay. yep. being saved. being saved an active process if you hold fast as i preached it to you Unless you have believed to no purpose. This, of course, is the Dewey Reams. Elsewhere translated is, unless you believed in vain. Mm -hmm. So just notice, you are being saved, yep. not that you have been saved. Nope, we got an active process Salva here. Salvation is an ongoing active process. If you hold it fast. We, we, we've got conditionality. Unless you have believed to no purpose. And potential failure. So further condition, conditionality and also a statement that you can believe in vain. In vain, You can believe and that belief won't get you anything. I'm reminded of the gospel, which I should have marked out earlier, where the Lord, you know, the, one of the most chilling verses where the Lord says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will be there at the end. Yes. Lord, did we not do great things in your name? And yet... Depart from me. I don't know you. <sighs> terrifying words. I believe that's... Matthew 7. Yep. So, the, the thing that we need to take from this, the thing that we need to remember, is that while the Catholic faith uh, is not a works-based salvation, we do it entirely, we, we are saved entirely through the grace by the grace of God, yes. there is action that is dependent upon on our part. Well, again, we see in the, you know, in the book of James that, you know, faith without works is dead. But, it is never my works that save me. Whereas, as you've, as you've pointed out here, once saved, always saved theology is predicated principally not on the grace of God to save me, but on my binding God to my will. Yeah. Now, they'll go and they'll say that once you're perform, accepting that grace, but you're accepting that grace once, forever, mm -hmm. regardless of all the other things. But even then, it's works based because I still have to accept that grace exactly. the one time. Exactly. Now, just just one final point. When you first proposed this idea to me, mm -hmm. um, I was excited by it. I was intrigued. I did want to quote one more Bible verse to explain why we're making this episode. Okay. Sometimes we hear the Popish plot um, belittle 
the beliefs of others. Yes. When we find those beliefs to be erroneous, and I, I can even admit, sometimes there's a, in our humor, there's a slight lack of charity. There is. But, but we are not meaning to uh, pick anybody out, yep. set any, you know, single anybody out, set anybody aside. We are doing this because we want everybody to come to the faith and to live that faith more fully. Because we love you and we are terrified by the prospect that someone of goodwill might be led astray by, by a wolf in sheep's clothing preaching a once saved, always saved brand of witchcraft. Exactly. And so I quote from the prophet Ezekiel, Ooh. chapter 3. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman to the house of Israel, and thou shalt hear the word out of my mouth, and shalt tell it them from me. If, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, thou declare it not to him, nor speak to him, that, which, that he may be converted from his wicked way and live, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but I will require his blood at thy hand. But if thou give warning to the wicked, and he be not converted from his wickedness and from his evil way, he indeed shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Even if you are not in communion with the Catholic Church, or not in full communion with the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, you are still my brother or my sister. That's correct. And so I have a duty to warn you. And if I don't warn you and you die in your error, well, that's bad for you and it's bad for me. So we are, ta we are trying to take our responsibility, baptized as priest, prophet, and king. Very seriously. To be watchmen for the house of Israel. And we're telling you, please do not be led into error by a slick salesman preaching this once saved, always saved brand of witchcraft. And if by some chance... You happen to follow uh, this brand of teaching. Seriously consider whether or not this is the most truthful brand of teaching. It is certainly a very easy one. It is certainly a very, uh, uh, we'll say, tempting one. I mean, if if, if all you got to do to go to heaven is that, yeah. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't you, right? If you've walked the Romans road. I would invite you to read the entire book of Romans, not just these cherry-picked passages, but the whole book to see what it says. And seriously consider whether or not you're on the right road. I do love uh, when you're driving on Dixie Highway. Uh -huh. you that Are you on the right road? Yeah. You pass, you pass a Baptist, I think it's the Dixie Baptist Church, and there's this big sign of Jesus. Are you on the right road? Yep. Of course, they're, the irony is they're not, but. The, 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 their sign is actually on a different road yeah. than, than the one that they're on. Well, plus, um, plus their theology. No, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> go, so, to, go down below and uh, comment on... What other belief might be witchcraft? Yes. Give us some other beliefs that you think maybe we should uh, delve into. Really stretch out to their farthest extremes and, and see just how little water they still hold. Because there are many ideas that at first appear sound, but when you dig a little deeper, you find there's less there than there appears. Yeah. And while you're down there, uh, hit the like button, and unless, of course, you did not find this to be an entertaining and, and uh, informative episode. But in which case, I would suggest that you seriously examine your motives. Yes. And if by some chance you're feeling that we did not... Uh, live up to your expectations. Please go down and below, uh, down to the comment section yeah. below, and let us know why so. We especially invite wolves in sheep's clothing to defend themselves in the comments below. Yeah, but again, uh, don't write a novel because if it's too long, we won't read it. We won't read it. <laughs> While you're down there, make sure to hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell next to it so you'll get notified when new episodes come out. And remember, as always, to live your faith, love your faith, and share, share that, that love. love.